We'll just start recording now, so that's all good. Okay, well, Steve O'Dell, or should I say Stephen O'Dell, because your mother <laughs> would call you Stephen if you're in trouble, is that right? That's very true. <laughs> See, I, know, I know these things. Well, you're um, Senior VP and Managing Director Asia Pacific for two amazing cruise company, Regent Seven Seas Cruises and Oceania Cruises. They are luxury personified in the cruise business. Very prestigious, very global, very worldwide known, and people in the know go on these cruises. So what I'd like to do today is talk about the sort of offerings, if you like, because I know you're not currently operating, okay, and that's fine and you're driven from the USA and so on, but a lot of Australians travel on your ships, okay? So why should they travel on either and both Region 7 Seas and Oceania Cruises? And I mean, you're the man in the know, so tell us why. Well, I, I think we're, you know, we've, we've, all, we've just all come through uh, uh, an extremely difficult and, mm. and different uh, period of time in the last 12 months. And, um, you know, we all look at the world a bit differently. We all behave differently. Uh, we QR code when we go into restaurants. Oh, we man. don't want to be with so many people. And I think, um, you know, the strength for um, our two brands coming out of this uh, environment is that we operate smaller uh, luxury vessels where there are less people and there's more space. You know, and I think it talks to a lot of what we're experiencing now and how we look at the world. Mm. Um, so if you take um, Region 7 Seas, for example, the ships are now more than 750 people, Lovely. which means that you get a lot of personal space because they're big ships. Mm -hmm. uh, they're big ships for their category. So um, you get big rooms, you get big balconies, uh, you have a wide choice of restaurants, you can have a table for two. Mm -hmm. You really don't have to queue up for anything. You know, there are no lines. So. Uh, you know, I said recently uh, to uh, to a friend of mine, you know, social distancing here has been part of our, uh, you know, it's a friendly yeah. place, but social distancing yeah. here has been in the, been our mantra for a while. Yeah. Um, and we've we've built a campaign around that, which we call Unrivaled Space at Sea. Mm. And it talks to these things that I just mentioned, the fact that, you know, you will be in a safe environment with lots of space, and lots of personal space, you know, big big suites, um, big balconies, bigger than you would see on most ships. Mm. So people can really, uh, you know, I, I, people can really relax and enjoy and, and not feel that they're within crowds. And I mm. think that's one of the big things to take out from this. Sure. I also think that um, whilst there's no, I mean, people say, oh, well, everybody's looking for the cheapest deal and all that sort of stuff. I don't see any price resistance from um, Australians with money to spend in terms of really yeah. spoiling themselves, because we naturally have, whether you go to the US or Europe, you've got to go a long way to begin with. OK, these people are flying business class, they're flying first class and they don't want to skimp. OK, so but the funny thing about it is like a very wealthy uncle of mine once he would be looking for the best deal on board or if it's got to be all inclusive, you know, and he wouldn't like to buy a bottle of water even. But your yeah. uh, unrivaled offerings are include a lot of inclusions, don't they? Tell me a little bit about those. Well, I, um, the all inclusive nature of a luxury experience, I think, is one of the most important things. Um, and there are a lot of versions of all inclusive. Mm. And I think, you know, I always encourage people to look in, into the fine print because all inclusive for one company is something totally different for another. Mm -hmm. um, I believe with the Regent uh, ships, uh, we are the most inclusive of all mm -hmm. cruise lines. Um, we, we don't really have any hidden extras. We don't charge supplements for speciality dining. Uh, we include tips, we include Wi-Fi, we include laundry, but, which mm -hmm. is a new addition. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the most important um, feature that we have that makes sets us apart from everyone else is that we include um, shore excursions yeah, that's in, in, our, in our prices. So when I, and when I say shore excursions, we say free unlimited shore excursions. Wow. There are a choice of um, shore excursions in every port. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take uh, more than one. You can take two or three if you can fit them in. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I think that sets us apart because no one else is doing that. No. Uh, they're, they're really good, meaningful shore excursions. They tend to be in smaller groups, again, fitting what's happening in our world mm. generally. And um, I think that that, you know, offers a real value 
Um, we're also offering um, uh, free pre and post cruise stays. Okay, we're running a promotion good. at the moment called Extended Explorations, yeah. where you can get three nights before your cruise in the port of call that you're joining in and three nights after in the port of call you leave. So, you know, we're adding a lot of value. And I yeah. think for the customer who buys luxury, they're, they're not looking for the lowest price or yeah. the, they're looking for a good deal. And the good deal is normally about value and content of what they're buying. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Now, I read somewhere about Upgrade Your Horizon, um, which is part yeah. of your wave season. Tell me a bit about that. What does that mean in terms of Upgrade well, Your Horizon? It's, well, we, we, we run promotions um, throughout the year. This one is actually just finished. It finished okay. on the front end. Um, uh, the 28th of Feb, yeah. uh, but we will have more similar kinds of promotions mm. coming through the year. So that, you know, it's worth looking out for those and signing up um, mm. for our, our offers, which you can yep. do through the website. Um, but this one in particular was uh, a two category upgrade, uh, book, book at a price and get a two category upgrade. Mm. What the two category upgrade means within our brand is that you move up to either a concierge suite or a penthouse suite. And when you move up the chain, you get more inclusions and mm -hmm. you get um, you know, uh, some extra benefits. Mm -hmm. So um, these are, this was a really highly successful uh, promotion through January and February, which in the cruise industry we call the wave period. Mm. And um, uh, that's, that's put us in good stead. What we have for March um, is uh, our extended explorations, which is... And you book you book your cruise, but you get three nights pre and three nights post yeah. on certain destinations. So those destinations include Tokyo, Singapore, Hong Kong, Cape Town. Um, there are some cruises from Sydney and Auckland. So um, what we're trying to do is create more value for guests yeah. uh, in in the way that we run promotions. Because when you do when we do the research among our clients. Price isn't the thing no, that it's not, it's not they're looking factor. for. Yeah. It's more the experience. And it's more about being with like-minded people. Um, you know, at a certain price point, you know the kind of uh, guests mm. that you're going to be traveling with. If you, go, if you go too cheap in your pricing in luxury, you get a different kind of customer. Mm. So I think uh, keeping our integrity with price is a really, really important thing. Why is it... Okay. After so many years, um, and cruising has been around for a long, long time, is it? Why is it that people still say when, you know, you talk about, oh, I don't like cruising. Have you ever been on a cruise? Uh, no. Mm. And I say, well, do you ever stay in hotels? Well, yes. Do you like hotels? Oh, no, but they're all different. Funny that, isn't it? All cruises yeah. are different. People still don't get that, do they? You know, yeah. it's quite amazing. The other question I wanted to ask was, so you've got two amazing brands here, Oceana. My wife is an Oceana devotee, by the way, because she went around South America on one of your ships. And she, you know, that's the, the gold standard as far as she's concerned now. But what's the difference between Regent Seven Seas and Oceania, if you had to identify any differences? Well, they're, they're both uh, brands that deliver uh, on, on high quality and, um, and value. Uh, I would say the essential difference is that uh, with with Regent Seven Seas, we include just about everything mm -hmm. that you would expect to mm -hmm. enjoy on, on board. With um, Oceana, it's a little bit more of an unwrapped version. So, for yep. example, we don't we don't include um, drinks. Okay. Um, we we don't include shore excursions as standard. What we do though is run promotions uh, where you yeah. can you can get a drinks package and you can. Uh, get a, a selection of excursions, but it's not a totally inclusive, um, it's more of an unwrapped version, if okay. you like. So it's extremely mm -hmm. high quality. Um, the big point of difference, which we talk mostly about for Oceana, is the quality of cuisine on board. Yeah. You know, we claim to have the uh, finest cuisine at sea. Uh, I believe in all my travels uh, that that's yeah. uh, um, um, a claim that we can uphold very well. Yes. Um, so we, we concentrate uh, more towards that and destination for Oceana yeah. and the price point is lower because yeah. there are less things included yeah. and for some people you know they for some people it doesn't really matter if we include it or not and they don't use it that, no, that's, that's right. a, a yeah. whole different market but yeah. in Oceana I think you might get more cost conscious people who you know want a high quality they want they want the comfort and high quality the excellent service yeah. 
um, but maybe they don't drink. Uh, maybe yeah. they don't drink spirits and wine. So yeah. that part of it is not important to them. Yeah. And you know, they may be well-traveled people who've been everywhere and done everything and don't want don't want excursions. So yeah. you know, this sort of unwrapped version um, may appeal to them. Um, people, yeah. The other yeah. the other thing is different between the brands is that the accommodations and uh, on on board the region ships are of course bigger. Yeah. And um, we don't you know we have we only have suites with uh, verandas, mm -hmm. whereas in the Oceana brand we do have other kinds of rooms. We have rooms with windows. We have inside rooms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you know there's there are there are points of difference between the two, but mm -hmm. the common thread is excellence in service, yeah. excellence. Yeah, there's a good um, funny story here for you digressing for a second, but our daughter was with my uh, uh, my wife on board uh, Insignia or Regatta, I can't remember now. And in any case, so my daughter just likes, she likes a fillet steak, but she likes it well cooked, you see, which is actually a challenge, as you know. And so in any case, so she asked, look, I just want a fillet steak, okay, with some French fries, and I'd like it really well cooked, please. And the waiter said, oh, I'll see if, it's that, if that's possible, madam, you know. So that was it. And then about five minutes later, the executive chef came up from the kitchen to ask where this young lady was that wanted to stay a fillet steak well done, you see, to explain the whole thing to her. But it was actually quite difficult. He'd have to butterfly it and everything. So yeah. for the rest of the cruise, she became Miss Well Done. And every time she ordered a steak well done, the executive chef would come up and see her and wave to her. That's quality of service. So instead of just having a spat in the kitchen about who the heck is this person that asked for a steak well done, he wanted to meet with her and have a chat with her and all this sort of stuff. Fine. Now you've you know, this is this mm. is um, you know one of the other points about Oceana. Everything is cooked to order. Yeah, freshest ingredients. Um, you know, it, because there's a small number of people, we yeah. can really pay. Um, a high attention to detail on delivering the food, um, the, the, you know, the styles of cuisine that we have. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it's... right. And you can't possibly expect, I mean, the food on most ships is actually very good these days, to be quite honest, okay? But on a ship with 3,000 passengers, I mean, I've been in the galleys and, you know, it is mass production. It has to be mm. because they're serving 3,000 guests or 4,000 guests three or four meals a day, that's volume cooking. I mean, there can't be a lot of individual attention. There may be in the fine dining restaurants, but your experience, from what I understand, is that Region 70s and Oceana are ongoing fine dining experiences. You know, they're not additional restaurants, but they, they, they exist, you know. Uh, well, the what we're trying to do is, is give um, a wide choice. I mean, for people who spend a long time on board and typically... Yeah our guests will spend 12 plus days on board. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so we, we are trying to give different um, experiences through, through a cruise. Yeah. So, you know, there may be four or five specialty restaurants, yeah. but they're not small restaurants that we can only fit a limited number of people. Yeah. You know, these, are, these tend to be restaurants of 100 plus people. Yeah. So you can satisfy customers. Uh, you know, I, I, in some in some luxury ships, the restaurants are small, so there has there has to be yeah. a cover charge and, and a reservation yeah. made a long way ahead. But we're yeah. we're much more flexible because our, our speciality yeah. restaurants are bigger. Yes. Uh, they can accommodate twos, they can accommodate groups. That's but good. what we're trying to do is give people a broad experience of food. I mean, yeah. particularly if you go to say the Mediterranean in the summer months yeah. in Europe. Um, you know, we do a lot of uh, our fresco dining, uh, yes. you know, our restaurants that are typically buffet restaurants in the daytime, yeah. we actually turn into outdoor uh, dining with, with table service and, and, and that kind of thing. So if people want to be more casual, you know, if they want to go to dinner in shorts yeah. and, and T-shirt in a more casual way, they can. Yeah. Um, but what we're trying to do is give people a broad range of things yeah. to enjoy. Yeah. And look, I think that um, casual nature is very important to Americans in particular. Um, you know, because the Brits probably like a bit of black tie and all this sort of stuff. But yeah. I think Australians as well. I mean, it's, you know, smart casual is the, the uh, dress code, I suppose. But look, um, all your ships at the moment are not operating, which is very sad. Lots of other ships are not operating around the world. I mean, this is a, tw you know, multi, multi million dollar question now. Where are you at the moment in terms of starting sailing? I don't want to go too much into protocols and stuff because I know they're being worked out at the moment. Um, but what's the score at the moment, Steve? Well, we, we've um, cancelled all uh, cruises through to the 31st of May. Yeah. 
Uh, we are keeping an open mind to when we can return. Mm. And so that's why that date moves mm. every six, uh, 30 days or so. We, we try to accommodate a restart. Mm. If we can't, then we'll cancel another month of voyages. Yeah. Um, a lot of it is, uh, a lot of the delay is around uh, ne negotiation with uh, governments and authorities mm -hmm. um, around um, uh, the health protocols and the requirements that we would need to follow, such as crewing yeah. um, uh, permits and so on. Um, but, you know, I think it's, it, it's, a, it's still quite a complex um, yeah, very. Uh, thing to answer because, you know, no, not only uh, we have a vaccine rollout, going on around the world which is really showing positive results mm. we've still got a lot of countries where you have to arrive in quarantine um, we still don't have enough airline seats to get people to destinations if they could go mm. um, but look I, I i think that you know the way things are moving now they're moving much much faster mm. um, but i don't see a restart being so far uh, in, into the future mm. but whatever we do has to be built around yeah, safety and safety of guests and giving guests confidence to come yeah. and knowing that they'll be in a safe place. Yeah. Um, what's interesting to me, um, and I, I'm sure you want to talk about future business, but what's very interesting to me is that um, there's a huge take up for 2022 and 2022. I was going to ask you about that, yeah. Mm. Um, you know, I think there's an element of um, FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. Mm. Um, you know, where, when you look at domestic travel here in Australia, for example, uh, if you want to go somewhere uh, middle to high end for a Thursday to a Monday uh, visit, it's very hard to get any uh, any accommodation anywhere. Yeah. I was yes. just trying to book Lord Howe Island yeah. for April and found that I couldn't go till September because it's sold out. Yeah. And I so I think there's a little bit of, um, you know, people are starting to plan because once mm. Um, travel opens up again yes. they want to make sure that they book they've booked what they want to do yeah, in the kind of accommodation they want to do it in yes because they ha i think there has been a lot of people there have been a lot of people who've missed out here uh yeah. during this past year because sim people just simply are booking way ahead yeah and look i think you're spot on and i live just down the road from noosa and christmas and new year in noosa was absolutely mm -hmm. unbelievably packed you know it was taking hours to mm -hmm. get in there and that's continued and what's interesting is that it's moved from a family um holiday now to couples and singles and yep. so on so it's quite interesting but no resistance to price um the other thing i wanted to ask you about was um in terms of starting again the key factor for that of course is um, when Australia decides to allow international travel. So at the moment, people can book into 22, 23 and cruises like that, but they obviously can't book cruises until you're operating and until they can fly to get there. So I mm. think those, those are your key factors, I suppose, in a sense. And uh, none of us, I don't think, not even Steve O'Dell knows when the government is going to say you can travel internationally. No, I think people, you know, my, my sense of it is that people have resigned themselves to yeah. the fact that 21 is going to be a difficult year yeah. in which to plan an overseas trip. Yeah. And that's why um, we're seeing decisions being pushed into 2022 yeah. and 23. Yeah. I mean, it's quite incredible um, how much demand there is for 22 and 23. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we've had some fantastic uh, opening sale days and constant business all the way through January and February. Amazing. Um, you know, particularly for people who who are past guests and they know our brands they know the kind of room they want to book um people are booking longer trips we're finding Interesting. Uh, we, we have a lot of grand what we call grand voyages which are voyages that could be 50 plus days yeah. we're seeing a lot of that kind of business booked and then recently we had um it was about two weeks ago we had the uh, opening of our 2023 world cruise for oceana yeah. ah, right, uh, 180, yes. 180 days and it sold out in one day. That's incredible, right. isn't it? And a fair yeah. portion of those are Australians. A, a good proportion, yeah, because mm. normally uh, with world cruises coming through Australia, mm. we don't see a, a huge take up from locals, but mm. this particular world cruise is not coming through Australia and New Zealand. Okay. So we, were, we managed to secure many, many more bookings than we would normally do. And uh, when you're talking 180 days, I mean, yeah. you know, it's significant.
It's a lot of money too, but you know, um, retirees, empty nesters, um, these are the people that book these, these cruises. But Steve, look, that's a wonderful segue of optimism. And it's not just optimism, it's fact in terms of that your bookings for 22 and 23 are so strong, taking up this pent up demand with Australians who want to travel. It's been very frustrating, I think, for many, many Australians because travel's in our DNA, I think. And uh, we have to travel and cruising's in our DNA as well. And uh, yeah, we will want to right. continue to travel and um, let's hope vaccinations and everything else happen and uh, we end up with a relatively safe world. But Steve O'Dell, thank you very much for your time today. I've really enjoyed chatting with you. Um, obviously, you've got everything under control at Region 7 Seas and Oceania. And I look forward very much to hearing news about you getting back into business and people being able to enjoy your ships. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, excellent, Steve. That was brilliant. Well done. Lovely inform. I told you it'd be a nice informal chat, you know. Oh, and it's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's that those are the sort of chats we'll have. And that's what I'll be chatting with uh, Joel this afternoon um, yeah. about in terms of I, I, I still think that um, I, I spoke with a lady called Margaret Bowen, not not an interviewer. Uh, Bowen, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's the I don't know if you know her, but she's the person appointed in Austrade. Let me just stop recording. The yeah. person